Hi, this is Nathan Cole of natesviolin.com, and today we'll be talking about the left hand, the fingers of the left hand, and how sometimes they're like people. Sometimes they fall right in line, they obey what you want to do. Of course, half the time it seems like they have minds of their own. And they sometimes act like a certain annoying type of person that's the person who won't commit. You know, as soon as they say something, you know, they make any kind of statement, but immediately they're like, well, but on the other hand, or actually, actually I was thinking, or they just won't make any statement at all. And as you know, you can't make plans with those types of people. You, you can't ever rely on them. The fingers of the left hand often act that way so that you can't rely on them. And for many players, they act that way most of the time. Yours could be doing it right now if you're playing the violin right now. And you might not even know about it. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. The bow would help. Um, that's if I'm playing a scale, let's say a D major scale. And, uh, did you catch that? It didn't quite go down all the way right away. There's a little shimmy. As soon as I put it down, even when it's halfway down, it wants to change. Eventually, it infects every note of the scale. Now, there can be obvious ones and subtle ones, but any kind of adjustment like that, non-committing fingers, is bad. Now, why is it bad? You know, it could be audible to your listeners, as, as many of those were, and you could have developed a, a blind spot, or we might call it a deaf spot, so that you no longer hear it, but your listeners do. But actually a bigger reason than that is that having fingers that go down that way prevents you from building up any kind of speed. It prevents you from building accuracy and most of all repeatability because you're never quite going to adjust in the same way twice. So it's a subtle difference in the way you place the, the fingers, but it could yield really big results. And for everyone that I work with, when they get rid of that habit, it's a big change. So here's where it relates to a tightrope. If you've ever been on a tightrope, well, I haven't been on a tightrope, but I've been on balance beams, things like that. You know the feeling, you're kind of testing, putting one foot in front of the other, but if you watch a, a real tightrope walker or a champion gymnast, they don't hesitate. You know, their, their foot isn't searching for the right place. They just put one, front, one foot in front of the other, and that's what you want. Now, um, a tightrope walker, how do they practice? Um, you know, those stakes are pretty high, right? So they have a net <laughs> when they're practicing. They're not doing the big practice over the gorge here. Um, now our safety net is the fact that our stakes are, are pretty low, you know. Um, even if it did happen to be the finals of the Tchaikovsky competition, um, putting a finger wrong is not going to mean that we fall to our doom. So let's look again at that um, scale, and let's say we're going to do a two octave scale. See, I get a note I don't like. Hmm, my first instinct would have been to, to adjust that, pull it back. I'm going to sit on it. So you have to be honest about this stuff. This is, you know, real, real talk with the fingers. If you detect an adjustment, if you detect that your finger is going down, like it feels like it's searching for the right place, then you've got to pick it back up and replace it. And uh, that's what I was just about to do there. No. But again, as I'm picking up and replacing, I'm never searching. I may try different places to see what sounds the way I'd like, but it always goes down in the same way. So if you don't like where the finger lands, big deal. You get more tries. This is the practice room, all right? And again, here. Not, uh, not going to meet an early demise at the, the bottom of the gorge. So, in the beginning, if you're really honest about it and you stop for every adjustment, it seems like it's going to take forever, but this honest way is really the only way. Now, of course, if you're talking about a three octave scale or, or many passages and pieces, the shifts are going to add a new dimension to it. But, you know, even if your hand and your arm change positions, 
a shift is still in the end, you know, from finger to finger. In that case, it was from two to one. So the same idea applies, and you know, there are different mechanics to shifting that can uh, make it much easier. I've got other videos on it, including one that I, I call "Never Miss a Violin Shift Again." The point is the same. Your finger has to arrive, has to have a sense of destination. So just like a confident tightrope walker, uh, your finger can't search for the right place. Now, this all sounds awesome, but what about if you're in a performance and uh, you play an out-of-tune note? Of course, you, you can't sit on that, right? In fact, you, you, may, you may or may not know that Heifetz uh, was known as the fastest adjuster of pitches. Of course, back then, you know, the, the strings that they played on, some of these raw gut strings, you could never count on where those open strings were going to be. Um, so you had to get good at that kind of adjustment. But his ear was so fast that he could adjust before the listener would hear it. So what's, what are we saying? Do you adjust or not? And if so, how to practice it if you're actually going to need to adjust in performance. The key is to have different modes of practice. You've got your normal working mode, and that's what we've been talking about here. That's where you get rid of that habit of adjusting the fingers all the time. You don't allow for adjustments. But in each day, you need to set aside some time for a performance mode, and that means you're performing. So you adjust pitches as necessary, but you make it really quick. Now, how did Heifetz get so fast at that? His ear and his fingers were so connected that he could sense where a finger was about to land, and he could adjust it as it was going down or just the instant that it went down. So that's, that's next for us. That's another video, how to hear the next note beforehand and how to connect your ear to those fingers so that you too can predict and adjust before your listeners will hear. So go to natesviolin.com, see me there, make sure and grab my free practice guide um, so that you can get started with building this habit and so many more. I'll see you there.